Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 40s World and thank you for coming to the kitchen because we're filming in the kitchen now. I don't know how the lightning or the not lightning the lighting is going. It doesn't really seem like it's giving me too much light that I want, I need, I desire but let's just go with it okay. We're just going to be a talkaholic today but I just wanted to touch bases on another social media, I wouldn't say frenzy, but just another download from another blog, a blogger or social media col columnist, I think I should say. Uh, it comes from the celebrityinsider.org. Check them out or subscribe to their uh, news feed and you'll get the uh, latest updates on entertainment news. But you're back. For more commentary on it's my opinion. <laughs> that's my platform and, and that's my show. Okay. It's all about what I read, how I interpret it, the topic that I'm talking about, and giving you my perspective. Okay. So it's Deb Chanel's 40s World is where you're tuning in to get it's my opinion show. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk now. How y'all ladies and gentlemen are doing this Saturday afternoon here in ATL, Atlanta, Georgia, for ones that don't know the acronyms or abbreviations. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, to reside in Decatur, Georgia. Okay. Decatur is greater. All right. Um, just sitting here at the kitchen table, just finished a nice, um, I guess it could be considered my lunch and my dinner. Probably get a little light snack later on in the day, but I went out to Taco Bell. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Taco Taco Bell. Okay. Run to the border. That's some of their marketing way back in the day. But anyway, got me and my mom something to eat. And um, stopped by the package store, picked me up my Seagram's Classic Lime Margarita. Check it out. I, I definitely displayed it in some of my videos. That is my beverage of choice. Uh, has very little alcohol in it. I think 3%. I'm not a big alcohol drinker. Uh, I'm like one of the newbies, as you can say. I'm 51 years old. I've been drinking socially since I was 18. That's what I'm going to tell y'all, okay? <laughs> They're 18, okay? So, that's my beverage of, beverage of choice. I like all the flavors. Uh, well, not all the flavors. I like... The main flavors I like from Sigrams is the definitely um, lime margarita, classic lime margarita, uh, the strawberry daiquiri, and the Bahama Mama. Those are my three top ones that I like. I've tried uh, Jamaica Me Happy. I even tried Cynthia Bailey's signature drink with um, Sigrams, the Bellini, peach Bellini. I didn't like it. It was just too salty. Um, and it had like an aftertaste after of it. I mean, the color was nice, refreshing looking, but the taste I, I just couldn't get with. You know, I just rather stick to my old tried three tried and true beverages of that brand. And I like um, Moscato wine. I don't too much drink it because it does hit me a, a little harder than my baby drinks, is what some of my friends like to call them. Um, I just, I mean, I like what I like, and I like certain tastes, and if they're not up to that certain level, then I don't really fool with it, because I'm not a big alcohol drinker, like I said. Uh, but I think it's called, or it's pronounced Pignot, a Piot, something like that. I think the G is silent. But anyway, um, you can get it in any grocery store, liquor store, or even they sell it at, um, I think it was Olive Garden. That I actually had a glass of wine there one time. And it, it's nice. But like I said, it hits me. I, you know, I strictly go to sleep. I don't act stupid. I don't act totally out my demeanor. I just get sleep and I want to go to sleep. So that's why I'm not, I don't really drink when I'm out, when I have to drive. Or basically when I'm really out, I like to drink at home. I like to be my own bartender and make my own drinks or go get my own drinks and just parlay at home, you know. Because when I get tired or I get sleep, I just go on and sleep on the sofa in my uh, recliner chair. Or I just go on up to my bedroom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and call it a day. 
but we didn't we didn't come here to mix uh drink discussions or anything we came for the hot topic the hot topic i'm gonna be talking about is cynthia bailey and her feelings on filming with nene what are y'all thoughts on it because personally personally i can i can take cynthia i can leave her there you know, right now she's in her romantic bliss where she's being courted by Mike Hill. Uh, I think he's an ESPN sports commentator person. Uh, well, we know he's in the sports arena and announcing different things that happen in that genre of entertainment. And uh, I think he's just really wooing her at the time. And if she's not quite sure in her actions, even though... We get older and we're seasoned women when we hit our late 40s, 50s, 60s. But sometimes we can still make stupid mistakes when it comes to the heart. Don't ever lead any understanding to the heart because the heart is very fleeting. It goes on emotions. It doesn't use logical common sense or even the intellect we do have in us. The heart is very fleeting. It's emotionally based and we go on feelings and desires and lustful uh, type of emotions when we're dealing with the opposite sex or same sex, however you get down. And it's not always trustworthy. It, to me, it's not trustworthy. So you have to go with your intellect and your logic and your common sense when you're dealing with the opposite sex. You know what you already want and desire and have hopes to have in your life and then you get wooed <laughs> you know what I'm saying and it's just a feeling it's just a passing because that don't last uh what do you have do you have good communication do you have the determination and perseverance to keep a relationship intact to flourish it and nurture it and watch it grow or do you just jump in automatically and just go with what you feel you need to do instead of really taking things backwards and really evaluating. And to me, I don't think really Cynthia is really doing that. She's just going on a lot of emotions and a lot of um, maybe people are in her ear that she needs to be with someone or, you know, she's just getting caught up in all her emotions uh, on what she feels she needs to be having at this day and time in her life at this moment. And to me, Cynthia is the type of person, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing or it's a good thing. <sighs> I'm just saying it's, how can I say it, to be delicate and not seem like I'm being like a Cynthia hater or something to that degree. Uh, I just wish she takes time to be by herself. You know, if it's one or two years, fine. But get to know her. A little bit better than what she's showing on reality TV. Because it's just showing to me. And only me because it's my opinion. It's my opinion show and that's what I do. I give you my perspective. My viewpoint of what I'm seeing. It just seems like she has to be coupled up. She can't be by herself. Uh, and just date. And you know, I don't care if she is getting wooed from the head to her feet. You know, she's just really feeling this man, this, that, that. I mean, you just got recently divorced from Peter. And that was the relationship you rushed into. And I'm like, with aging comes growth and maturity and thinking on another higher level than what you were in your 30s, 20s, and teens. Uh, and I just don't see that. For and I want her to be happy. And I want her to be uh, well-rounded in herself you know because she comes from a mother a uh, family of divorce and of course she don't have a first divorce and you know she jumped into that marriage and whatnot and wasn't reading the signs real well or whatever didn't really matter if her family agreed with who she was marrying or not it's like okay where is your sense of thought coming from where is your pattern of thought coming from in putting this person in your life now it's like okay i got rid of peter He's living his life. He's doing his thing. And I wish him well, which that's what you're supposed to do. Now you're seeing him with other people and you've been with other people too. Uh, and they haven't worked out. And I'm like, are you just doing it for the show 
So you don't have to be by yourself and you can have a companion or whatnot. But I'm like, have a companion. Have a companion for a while. Two, three, four years. You know what I'm saying? It's no rush. You know what I'm saying? Watch your daughter grow up. Be vicariously living through her life. And, you know, you still got a platform yourself. You got the wine cellar. You got Real Housewives of Atlanta. You got your eyewear. You got your luggage wear. I mean, you don't have to be Mrs. Somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not like you never were a Mrs. Somebody. I just would like to see Cynthia just, you know, slide down a pole, take a rest. I mean, because she she was on this little kick where she wanted to find herself and she wanted to rest and she wanted to never get married again, this, that, and third. Never say never. You know, because there's somebody out there for everybody if we all just be patient enough and that the Lord bring them to us. Okay, not forcefully looking for somebody Telling somebody what you want. That's where a lot of women make mistakes. It's up to a man to learn you. You don't give him all the answers to the puzzles of what makes you tick. You make him work for it. You know what I'm saying? And it goes vice versa. Don't tell a woman everything that you want. Because that's just, that's doing that, what do you call it, romanticizing or romantic stage that you're going to, the courting stage. You're going to be fulfilling everything that you have put out to that person that you need to be, to be in order to be happy, you know, from having a companion. No, it's just like going to school when you start in elementary, kindergarten. You don't know these people, but you know you have a desire to interact with people. And sometimes when you interact with people, you get to know them. You get to know their likes, their dislikes. And it's because you've observed them, you've been around them. And you can make that observation and, you know, imply it to them. You know, am I viewing you right? Am I capturing your essence correctly? You know, have that conversation. But that's a no-no to anybody <laughs> that's dating. I even had to learn that the hard way because people are going to give you what you say you need to be able to get closer to you. And they may not mean you. Um uh, they may not be honest enough to say what they really want from you because they may be a user. They may be there just for an opportunity they can get from you and then they move on. So you got to be careful. I have to be careful. So I'm giving the information that I deem, you know, golden and just sit and watch a person. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll be dropping little hints without even knowing you're doing it by your body language or you're openly, openly expressing it to that person. So that's just my deal with Cynthia on how I see her before I go into this commentary that they wrote up on her uh, when it comes to Nene. Because see, Nene is a very seasoned woman. She knows what she wants. She knows how she's going to get it. And it's up to us to be on her team or not. Because she don't really care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say she's a bad person. Because I have seen some good things in her. By watching her on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And her going for what she wants. And she didn't have any. Um, what do you call it? She didn't really. She was I should say fearful. Uh, fearful. When it was time to expose herself to other things. Like com comedy. I don't think Nene is a very comedy type person. Uh, I just don't think that's her arena. I feel Real Housewives of Atlanta is a great platform for her to express herself. I think she's a great businesswoman when it comes to trying to make other streams of revenue for her and her family. Because, you know, she is the breadwinner. She never mince words with that and you know Greg can accept it how it is or, or, or how it you know wasn't we all have a past you know what I'm saying but people really do gravitate to me because of her energy and I'm not gonna say it, she springs off bad energy all the time you just gotta understand her position or her stance of what she feels she wants out of this life we live you know so she's actually being honest with you for her to say she's controlling everything, no, that's a <laughs> that's she just being delusional when it comes to that. People who gen genuinely want to be around any day are there for her uh, because they they've seen the depthness of her, how uh, low she can go, and those feelings that get her to that low point, and they can see how she can rise to the top like cream. You know what I'm saying? 
but she definitely knows who she is and what she wants and nobody can come in and you know toss her around like you know she's here one way she's there another way you know no she knows how to manipulate she knows how to maneuver and she knows how to try to stay on top of this game which is drama reality and you know she has put her own self on a pedestal and she's riding it how she feels she wants to ride it. And, you know, I have no problem with that because she's telling you, you know, this is my platform. This is where I am. I'm here and I may see you here, but you can be surprisingly convinced that as time goes on, you might be on her level. And she's a competitor. She likes to compete with others. She won't tell you that, but she likes competing and seeing how far she can push a person. So if you get into that entertainment arena, you're going to be faced with a lot of obstacles and, and wrenches thrown your way. And you just got to know how to maneuver and stay on your pedestal that you place for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because well, I'm not definitely putting nobody on no pedestal. You know what I'm saying? I can see where you're coming. Like Nene said, I see you. We see each other. I see you, Nene. And you do, do your thing. Because what works for Nene is drama. Good, bad, indifferent, however you want to look at it, it works for her. She's found her niche. And that's basically what Cynthia needs to do. She needs to stay firm in her, her shit, accept it, and move on and be that person, whatever that person is. So like, like I said, I, I, I don't know who she is. And here we are 12 seasons. And she goes back and forth here and there, making allies and come back, back and forth here and there. You know, it's like, okay, come on. And one thing I can't say for Nene, she has been the exact same person since day one, since season one. She's always claimed to be the head person in charge. And in her mind, she is, you know, she's, you know, um, showing everybody what she's made of, where she's come from, where she's not going to be taken into and where she's going to go. And that's why I think Bravo has to respect her because she she said, forget y'all. I'm going to go try some new uh, avenues out here and see what I can do. And then if I fall flat and short, you can best believe I'm coming back home. So, and that's basically what she did. She didn't do too well to me as a true actress. Uh, when she went out to be on the, that show Glee that eventually got canceled you know, she was an okay, at, you know, actor, extra actor on that, but it was no real defined work proven or put there by her part. I think that's something you have to study or you're just born naturally an actor or actress. But even then they notice that they have to learn certain pieces of their particular career choice or art form that they want to relate and build upon. So you have to do schooling on that. People teach you how to become a great actress and actor. And like I said, if you're genuinely born with it, the gift of gab or the gift of entertaining, it's going to come second nature to you. And you're just going to like knock it out the park all the time. Like, you know, I have to say Denzel Washington, you know, uh, and I like Sally Fields and it's somebody else. That just uh, just make you go there. They know how to trigger those emotions. Like they know how to push certain buttons to make you cry, make you laugh, make you indecisive. I mean, that's a true person to have learned their art and or you know that art form in the world of acting. And so uh, I'm just waiting, and I don't know how long it's going to take Cynthia to try to find herself because even Candy. You know, she's drama filled too, and she knows what she wants to get out of her solidified, solidified platform. You know, and I can go on with others, just Cynthia has been that one figure that has really seriously been the underdog other than Portia. Um, and Portia has proven to be, you know, one of my favorite characters. Now, when I had left her on the uh, the train of thought, she was looking for the Underground Railroad. You know what I'm saying? We don't even really want to go there because sometimes I have to put her back there how things are acting with her. Now, and I'm going to do a story on her as well, or commentary uh, before the night's over. Because like I said, I'm just knocking them out the box. I'm getting back familiar with my uh, gifts because I did um, don the name Gifts of Gaps 
for Deb Chanel's 40s world. So, you know, when I come on the tube, I'll be looking for my gift of gaps to, you know, correspond with me or, or communicate with me in those um, comments or, you know, whatever, however it comes, you know, I like talking. I always tell people that I have a gift of gab. So I like to interact and I like you all to interact with me. But getting back to uh, this little dialogue from Celebrity Insider, you know, they're trying to, I guess, pitch Nene and Cynthia back and forth with each other. But right now, Cynthia is just so much in love with this Mike Hill. He's wooing her and she's even insinuating, you know, you need to marry me, you need to, I'm like, Lord, if this ain't Portia again, like, why y'all feel y'all have to have a man and be a missus right off the bat? I mean, that's something that's attainable, and that's something every woman should experience once in a lifetime, or two or three or four or five times, however you want to do it, you know, how many times you want to do it. But let's just, when we get in our ages of 50s and 60s, we really need to know a lot about a person before we hook up with them. And I'm not just throwing it out there saying, you know, women need to do this and I got it all together. No, I tell myself that every day, you know, when I meet someone or whatever. Is this person right for me, Lord? If they are not, please get them away from me. That's my whole stance. I want the Lord to bring me. Uh, my mate, you know, I don't want to sit here and give five or 10 things I expect in a man and for them to go and try to emulate that and then don't even be what they were supposed to be in the first place. You know, they just gave me a scam in a sense. And then it was this totally whole different person. Like, no, 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 no. I want a companion and, and, and husband too, but I'm like, it's not it's, that's a part of me. That's not all of me. And if I never get a chance to be married again, it's just it what it is. You know, I'm still going to live life. I'm still going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to still have my standards. You know what I'm saying? But it just drives me wild when I see women out there. Well, I got to have someone. No, you know, you got to have them with the Lord and your spirituality. That's what you need to have. Okay. You don't need to have things that you think you need to have. Okay. Because you're living life. You got breath in your body. You have lovely children or child, you know, or you have a lovely career that you love. You're very spiritual, you know, field. Um, and you, you're just setting yourself up for more involvement for who you are. And if that person comes in your life and connects and y'all want to make it, you know, a marriage or bond, a commitment, then ooh, blessings to you. But don't you know, force a man or say, if you don't been with him six months to a year, it's time for us to connect as husband and wife. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, now, if you've been with a guy three or more years, then yeah, a, a decision of commitment should have been, you know, definitely solidified after one year. You should be know, known as you're off the market. You know, you don't date this person for a full year. You don't been around them. So, you know, a length of time, you know their ways, they're compatible with your ways, and you would like to see where it goes. So that one year should turn into, you know, we're not seeing anybody else. We want to, you know, see how far this can go. And then in that second year, y'all should be planning an engagement. And maybe that third year, get married. You know what I'm saying? It's just steps to it. It's levels to it. I feel that that's just way how I, I put it. But anyway, we have this uh, commentary written by Celebrity Insider, and it was written up by Alexis Stone. It was given to us on June 20th, uh, 2019. And it goes in to express as a title of topic conversation. Cynthia Bailey reveals her feelings about filming Real Housewives of Atlanta with Nene Lees. So see, I already there, that title says division. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be drama feel. And I personally think, and maybe I'm wrong in thinking this way, but like I said, it's my opinion, my perspective, my platform. I want to venture to say if Cynthia didn't have Mike Hill in her life, or any man for that ex uh, example, she would be trying to make amends with Nene. She would be drawing up another friendship contract. She would be trying to, I wouldn't say lick her boots, but pretty much that. You know what I'm saying? 
she don't like to not have somebody to cling to. Cynthia to me is a clinger. I'm sorry. She's a clinger. Um, Cause she's even now in social media, she's always taking pictures of her and Mike, you know, Mike doing this, that, and the third. I'm like, girl, go and win your race by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Let him put you on his social media and drape you down or whatever. Cool. But you don't have to do that on your social media. Go and be the woman. Go forth. Be great. You know what I'm saying? In your endeavors. But if she just said, give me, cause I'm, I'm telling you, she didn't have the man in her life, boyfriend, compact, she would be up Nene's behind. She would be her person that she goes after, go try to make amends with the, anything to be in a clique and start her staying on her own. Cause you know, she tried this thing with Kenya Moore and I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to see how that is. <laughs> how really that's going to work out. But to me, it's just like, Cynthia, you still got to use, baby. Kenya used you to uh, keep tabs on the show for you to give her the ins and outs and this, that, because she knows she wasn't going to get too much from Candy. The Candy recognized game. She knows how to scheme because she's a little schemer herself. She knows how to play the game in this entertainment field. So you ain't going to be cozying up the Candy and she going to be thinking, ding, 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 ding. What do you want? What do you really want? Okay. And so she's been, you know, pretty much behind the scenes and Cynthia giving her all the 411 and when Cynthia said she wanted her to come back I knew somebody was doing some talking some litigating lit, 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 what do you call it litigating <laughs> on Kenya's behalf and she probably got some candy signed in on it and they're like yeah let's bring Kenya back let's, let, let's do that you know whatever I'm like see that's what I'm saying people be saying uh, uh, other commentators or even just followers, subscribers, they'd be like, No, they don't need this show. And I'm just talking about Candy, Kenya, Phaedra, Nene, um, Cynthia. Like, oh, they don't need this show, blah 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 blah. This, that, and third, they can do well without that. Well, uh, okay, well, tell me this. Just using Candy as an example, before she got on Real Housewives of Atlanta nine years ago, who well, it's been ten? No, it's been nine years ago, I think, maybe ten. I'm not sure. Where was she in social media? You know, we knew she probably was doing stuff behind the scenes, writing uh, music, lyrics, songs for other artists. But was she getting recognition in social media world, where big time stars were shouting her out, saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Candy Burrs wrote this for me. Look up Candy Burrs. Da, 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 da. No, you didn't hear that. They were relevant. You know, they were relevant when they were in Escape. Escape was doing that darn thing in, in the 80s. But, you know, even Tiny with T.I., you wasn't really catching her, uh, searching for her unless T.I. did something because T.I. was making moves uh, back in the 80s and the 90s. Okay? In the 2000s. Oh, maybe it's the 90s and 2000s. He was, you know, trying to come out, how they say, on the ground to the upfront. <laughs> Instead of, you know, going, playing their own little local acts in certain clubs or putting out their own CDs, you know, peddling them in the streets or whatnot, hoping somebody would give them airplay on the radio stations. And they probably, and he probably was visiting V103 or uh, 107.9, just a lot of local radio stations that's into urban music. He probably was doing his due diligence and being a true hustler. And that's how he got found. Because I know they were playing his songs a lot on 103, B-103 uh, down here in Atlanta. So he was, you know, rubbing elbows with the people that could make him known out there in the streets. You know, local, <coughs> locally instead of underground. Where you just, you know, <coughs> be getting music out of people's uh, back of the trunks of their cars or they peddling them in the streets or whatnot. You just give them a list or two or whatnot. He was doing that amongst other things. And Candy, I'm not Candy, but Tiny was there, you know, uh, taking care of the household, you know, which, you know, definitely didn't been doing a great job with that or whatnot. Never heard anything bad with her unless she was connected with T.I. <laughs> doing something she had no business doing with him. And, you know, they were out for him in a sense. <laughs> and she just got caught in the midst. 
So it just is what it is when we be uh, loving these hood, uh, you know, thug life type of men. And it could go for any race. It's just not in the black community. You could be white and be a thug. You could be Asian and be a thug. You know, it's just you like those rough type of brothers, you know, that don't dress up in a suit and tie all the time, but very intellectual in what they do in their realm of living and surviving for their livelihoods. But, uh, you know, they're trying to make a feud in this type of uh, giving us drama so we can watch the show. But I'm like, child, ain't about standing on Nene and Cynthia's. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-uh. We already know what position they play, and we know how it's going to pretty much uh, turn out, and it usually is on point, on spot with what we were thinking. But getting into this article, let me read a little bit. It says, everyone is preparing for season 12 of Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Cynthia Bailey is no exception. She's been gearing up for a new season of the TV series, and she's reportedly addressed how she feels filming for the, filming for the show after everything that happened with Nene Leakes on last season. Hollywood Life discussed things with a source who is reportedly close to Cynthia. And here's what they had to say. Cynthia is so unbothered over the fact that she has to see Nene next weekend. When Nene, when Nene begins filming Real Housewives of Atlanta in New York, the source began. The same insider continued and said they're being forced to film together and actually talk about actually talked for the first time since the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion last spring. She doesn't care at all. Cynthia knows this would be the first time that she would have to talk to Nene in a while and neither is looking forward to it whatever, whatever so. Oh, whatsoever, I meant to say. The same source said that Nene is currently not speaking to any of the Real Housewives of Atlanta or any of the ladies. She's just speaking with Eva Marcel who has been her friend for a while, according to the reporters. You may recall that the feud between Nene and Cynthia started when Nene felt betrayed that Cynthia invited her arch enemy, Kenya Moore, to the same party that Nene was at. Other than this, Nene has been doing great these days, Not busy with the new lo now busy with the new location of her shop. She also made sure to mark Father's Day by praising her hubby, Greg Leakes. And it says she shared a photo of his of his on her social media account and wrote a message to go with it. <laughs> so I'm like, one thing, one, two things I had to differ about this article that was written by a uh, celebrity insider. Uh, they were saying it, they were being forced to work with one another. I'm like, no, if you want your bag, your loot, your highest, however you want to view getting your money, your paycheck, you are on that format of a platform because you desire to keep making that money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to return to a nine to five. If it, Well, Nene, I think, did have a nine to five. She had a lot of selfish jobs, being an employee and being an employer. That's just how she rose. You know what I'm saying? So that done not phase her. Cynthia, I think she's just been solely in the modeling world. Well, she definitely has a certain schedule she has to follow. She works, you don't have to work for somebody else. I mean, you could look at her as a freelancer or in the modeling world or contract work. But, I mean, you're still on somebody else's platform. Even with being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, you still have to abide by their rules. <laughs> They're not their own boss. I'm sorry. No, you still have to clock in. You still have to show and do and react to however they want you to portray yourself. More than more than norm, they want you to act a doggone fool and degrade yourself, okay? Because they want drama. So that means you have to stop a little folks around, get a little salt charge here and there, or just verbally make a fool out of yourself. That's what they want. That's what they sign up for, and that's who they work for. Bravo signs their chance. They don't have their own individual account say, I'm paying Nene Lee's, uh, and I'm signing my check, Nene Leeds. You know what I'm saying? I'm CEO of Nene Leeds. You know what I'm saying? No, Bravo has their name at the bottom and it's made out to Nene Leeds. Okay, she has to file taxes, just like all of us good working citizens out here tuning into their nonsense behavior, capturing all the drama for ourselves, our edification, um, 
<laughs> to uh, feel the mindless drama that we want to consume for seeing them on their show. They're not actresses. They're not actors. These It's supposed to be a reality where they're following you, um, trying to scope out your whole day, doing certain segments or periods where it's drama filled. Okay? That's all it is. <laughs> I'm sure they had to follow some scripts that they may outline that they want them to show and let it play out uh, organically speaking, but you know, it just kind of is what it is. They still want that drama. They still want that it factor <laughs> where I don't care what you're doing, but you need to give us something. You need to promise to us in writing when we get your contract together and you need to deliver. And basically that's what it is. And sometimes the drama that they feel they want, you may not want to express that drama. You might want to get them some other type of drama, but they said, no, we want that drama. And when you work in the satanic field, uh, which entertainment business usually is. You're going to sacrifice yourself, your soul, your, you know, all of that. I truly believe that. And to be able to grow expeditiously throughout the ranks of the entertainment field, you got to give up something. And it's, you have some people that have been one hit wonders or whatnot, and they sit and tell you the story that they're not going to sacrifice their soul. They're not going to sacrifice their loved ones for fame and fortune. They're not going to do it. And then that's why you see them working everyday, normal, non-entertainment type jobs because they are made of more significant stuff that's going to get them into the kingdom. Um, so that's pretty much what all I had um, trying to discuss it with my gifts of gaps on my opinion if I was having a real... Well, I am having a real live conversation with you all because once you tune in, I'm talking to you. You know, enlivening in color, baby. Okay, enlivening in color. No restrictions barred here. Okay, you give, I give you my opinion on the topic that I'm talking about. You share my, you share yours with me, and I would definitely read it, give you a like, give you a little heart emoji or whatever, and I'm moving on. You know, unless it's something I really need to talk to you about that I agree, or I disagree with you, then I put it in the comments and we just go back and forth. But it's gonna all be in love. It's all gonna be in love because I, you know, just like you have an opinion, I have an opinion. You probably don't want to get on a platform and share your opinion because you're just going to keep it local with, you know, your people you want to talk to. I'm trying to go global. <laughs> I'm trying to find like-minded people such as myself that want to get up on this YouTube and converse. Talk about some stuff. You know, share my videos. I'm going to have everybody. At the last point when I was starting, I had people over in Japan I was talking to. I had people over in Taiwan. <laughs> I wasn't doing a darn thing. You know what I'm saying? But I got lazy. I got lazy because I ain't really want to talk. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, that's my story. That's what I'm keeping up with. And if I have to come back and retract, I will do it. I ain't, I ain't above no. or I'm not above nothing or no one that I can't come back and say, Lord, I have wrong these folks. <laughs> you know, my perception was wrong. I'm going to come back. And I've done it. I've done it on Candy Birds on some things that I may have kind of had an opinion about, but then other stuff came out, and I was like, okay, I'm going to give her, I'm, I'm going to give her, but when people are acting stupid out there, and they sitting out putting it on social media, and they're doing it because it's coming out their mouths, then, you know, I'm like, uh, I'm going to speak on it, because I don't like the kids to be messed with, like I said, I, I really don't, I, I feel like if you're going to have a platform on a reality show or whatnot, and it's going to be exposure for your whole family, then, you know, show who they are so we can get a picture of them. You know what I'm saying? Just say, okay, she raising somebody nice. She's she doing good. But don't put them in the midst of the whole show where they're going to have to be, you know, signing up for something they didn't really want to be a part of in the first place. It just happened to be coming in the place where they reside, where they live, where they feel safe. And you putting all these cameras and all these people behind these cameras, you know, you know, putting you like on a microscope, like you being studied or something. And that's not right. You know, if they want to show happy times with kids, kids swimming, studying, you know, doing normal things that kids do without pressure, then capture that. But don't put them, you know, in the midst of and something that you don't put in just because you want to sit at home every day and you don't want to get a nine to five. This is your choice of how you want to make your living. That's you. You know, you take all those grunts of, 
criticisms and all that kind of stuff. Leave the children out of it. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand that. They get on my nerve. You know what I'm saying? Now, when they get 18 and they think they're grown, they get on the tube or they get on social media, then, yep, they fair game because, like I said, go tip for tat. If we didn't talk about them to keep them relevant and share our opinions or our uh, opinions on them or what we perceive, then, you know, who's going to cover it? But the local news, uh, other journalistic type platforms. So we keep you relevant when you're out here doing these silly things because we're giving you an opinion and we're trying to keep a moral compass around you. Because it seems like you have definitely not all the moral compasses out and it's just me, 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 ah, 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 ah. So we have to bring you back grounded. You know what I'm saying? So it goes tit for tat, you know. And, um, I think that's all I got to say, y'all, about this subject. So, peace and blessings. I'm out, and I'll probably show up for another video. Then I might be through for the day. But like I said, I'm just trying to put the videos out there, let y'all get back acquainted with me. And, you know, I'm trying to stay away from giving y'all so many just clips of who I'm talking about instead of just, you know, coming on air, doing what I got to do, and just leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of like a celebrity. Let me give you my entertainment that you don't came here for, and let me get on off the stage. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do, in and out. That's it. Okay? Peace and blessings, y'all. Bye.